Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. I finally achieved a goal that I've been seeking for years, and that is to obtain the Eagle Nebula, the Pillars of Creation, Messier 16, in narrow band imaging, that is with the Hubble palette, using sulfur, hydrogen alpha, and oxygen to get the colors. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. I remember a couple years ago looking at the different astronomy sites on YouTube and one of them was Chuck's Astrophotography, Chuck Ayub of Detroit, Michigan area. You know, I grew up in Detroit, so I, I kind of feel like I might be, you know, maybe even know Chuck to some extent, but not really. But nonetheless, he had a picture on his uh, site uh, th that he submitted to the APOD uh, and he won a picture of the day from the uh, NASA APOD and astronomy picture of the day and it was from the Messier 16 the pillars of creation and he shot that with a 127 millimeter refractor telescope a triplet and you know back then I didn't have that I had a little ED80 uh, 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 refractor but since then I you know wondering how, can I do that? And I'm not looking for uh, an APOD, but I'm looking for the Hubble palette, getting a great picture of M16. Well, over the years, I've been saving my money, and I finally did buy a telescope similar to what Chuck was using. Uh, this is the uh, Orion Eon 130 millimeter telescope. It's a triplet refractor. And with that, I also acquired a monochrome camera. You know, you, you, you need a monochrome camera to shoot in the uh, uh, narrow band imagery with the uh, the hydrogen alpha filter, the uh, oxygen three filter, and the sulfur two filter. Anyway, I, I finally acquired the camera. It was the, uh, it is, the uh, uh, ZWO ASI 1600 monochrome cam camera, which is, is pro, so it cools down. Now, I usually cool it down to around zero or minus five Celsius. Anyway, I also acquired the filters, and these are the six nanometer filters, uh, which helps with the uh, reduction of, uh, of light pollution. Now, you know, in Chuck's area, he has light pollution of around eight or nine. He's near the Detroit Metropolitan Airport. Uh, out here in Savannah, where I am, uh, I have nothing but marshes and uh, the ocean to my south and to my southeast. So I have a pretty good uh, nighttime sky here. Now, if I look to the north, toward the city of Savannah, uh, I do get some light pollution from that. But over here, my, my Bordeaux rating's about a four or five. I give it 4.5. So I figured I should be able to get the Eagle Nebula. Well, last year I tried it with my uh, Celestron uh, C11 uh, scope at F7. And you know, the picture came out okay. Uh, it's not the greatest in the world. It's, it was, at the time, I thought it was pretty good. But I wanted to see if I can do even better. And of course, narrow band was the way to go. Now, I, I, I tried it over the last several nights throughout late July and uh, the first two weeks, first three weeks in August. I've been fighting the clouds, trying to get some nighttime imagery, and, and it worked. I got some nights of my oxygen, a couple hours another night in the hydrogen alpha, and then a couple uh, hours, almost three hours uh, last night, uh, actually, uh, with the uh, sulfur two. So let's go over the telescope and the equipment that I have, uh, showing you how I have set this system up. Well, first of all, we do have the Eon um, 130 millimeter refractor triplet. It's from Orion, and it's a beautiful scope. I mean, this I'm, I'm very impressed with this scope. It's, it's producing some fine imagery. I have the, um, the mount, the new mount here, the uh, Skywatcher E. Q6R Pro, and this is a, a very good mount too, and it supports the weight easily on here. This region right here, this is actual a whole computer right here. Uh, this is a Windows 10 computer, this little box here, and I have it on Velcro. Uh, this whole box here uh, operates the entire system. Um, it controls the guide scope, the uh, main scope, the filter, uh, the, the uh, focuser, and the telescope itself. Uh, and all of this is remoted to my 
desktop upstairs. I have a strong Wi-Fi signal out here. I set up a Wi-Fi a repeater up uh, right above me up in the uh, balcony uh, so that I can get a really strong signal from this telescope and from the other telescope on the other side of the yard as well. I call this telescope two and I call the other one telescope one for lack of better, uh, better definition. Another thing I have on here is the dew heaters, uh, a dew strap rather. Uh, they uh, surround the, uh, the lens itself and, and it controls the guide scope. Um, keeps the dew from forming on the guide scope. So you know, it's a very important thing here. I, I wake up in the morning, the dew is literally dripping off the roofs here. Well, I was watching another uh, astronomy video uh, from uh, Dylan O'Donnell, Star Stuff. And he had a recommendation, instead of using the uh, SHO, sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen, try using the green filter instead of the uh, sulfur filter. So I tried that too. And I'm putting this all together and let me show you some of the results. So the first thing I want to do is look at the uh, images from the narrow band. So the first night I was able to get some good hydrogen alpha. And here's the, the, the uh, image for this. This was about a two hour, I think it was two hours and 45 minutes worth uh, of data. And you can see the uh, nebula is very strong in the hydrogen alpha, which usually relates to the red color. Um, and then the uh, second night, after several nights of clouds, I was able to get uh, the oxygen levels. And this was the oxygen. And you can see it's not nearly as significant as the hydrogen alpha, but you know, significant enough. And this is where you get a lot of the blue coloring. So with these two, I put together uh, my first image, and that was this one here. And this was the hydrogen, oxygen, oxygen. So hydrogen was red oxygen was green and oxygen was blue. And I came up with this picture here. That's not so bad. Um, there you can see the pillars of creation and so forth and the red from the hydrogen alpha uh, dominating this, this image here. So finally, after several more nights of clouds, I was able to get some sulfur data. Actually, I got the green data first. Uh, and this was the green data that uh, you know, Dylan O'Donnell suggested using um, green instead of sulfur. One of the reasons why, look at the sulfur itself, and it's it's a lot weaker, actually. There's not much. Uh, if I actually brought this back down to uh, black, like in the other areas, uh, let's try that. Uh, if I bring it down into the, uh, the black, uh, let's see here. Put that under that. Open up a preview. Uh, bring a preview over to here, and let's, let's just bring this down to where we see some black. You can see it really wipes out the data, and there you have it right there. And um, yeah, uh, you don't get much data from the sulfur. Uh, so this is the green here. A little bit more data, a little bit more light pollution here at the bottom as well. Um, I was fighting a moon that was coming into the picture. Uh, and this was several nights later after the moon has passed out of the picture. And as you can see though, not nearly as dominant, of course, as the hydrogen alpha as you see right here. So with that in mind, let's close these and look at some of the uh, collections here. Uh, here's the hydrogen, um, sulfur, and oxygen. So I used hydrogen for red here, and then I used the uh, sulfur for the green uh, color and the oxygen three for the blue color. And that, this is pretty nice. It's not so bad. Uh, zooming in to the uh, pillars of creation, there you can see right there, uh, it, 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 it doesn't look too bad. Anyway, uh, let's close this out and let's take a look at the um, picture with the green as the red color, the uh, hydrogen alpha as the green color, and the oxygen three as the blue color. And here you have this image here. And there you can see, once again, the pillars of creation right in this area here. And um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's not too bad, not too bad. So let's uh, go to the finale here and look at the picture from the using the, the uh, sulfur as the red color, the hydrogen alpha as the green color, and the oxygen 3 as the blue color. 
And here you have right here a pretty nice looking image, I think so, um, with the uh, the pillars of creation. Uh, the, these stars are in here are, are very young. I think they're only like four and a half million years old, something like that, compared to billions of years for our sun, for example. Um, I think they're like, what is it, 450 million years old. I'll have to stop and look it up. So I, I just looked it up and I'm reading it right here. The, uh, <laughs> there are approximately 450 stars in the uh, nebula itself right in here. Um, so forth. There was approximately 450 stars within uh, the nebula. They're about 5.5 million years old, so I wasn't too far off. And that compares to the age of our sun, which is what, 4.6 billion years old. So these are extremely uh, infant stars uh, developing in this region here. And uh, yeah, the Pillars of Creation, the Eagle Nebula. Now, it was the first time I was actually you know, looking at it from a distance, and I could actually see what looks like uh, the eagle itself. Here's its wings, its beak and, and head right there, and its tail feathers over here. Yeah, to me, it looks like... Yeah, it looks like an, e an eagle. So there you have it. The Pillars of Creation. I finally got it. Well, I hope you like this video. Uh, some previews of coming attractions. I, I got a couple of other things I'm working on. Of course, I still want to get Jupiter and the moons uh, while it's still near opposition. It just passed opposition a couple days ago. Uh, but I'm also working on some other uh, uh, targets in the sky. Uh, I'm working on M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. Also working on the Ring Nebula. I'm trying to get this outer shell of red gases uh, that surround the shell of the Ring Nebula. Well, hopefully that'll be coming up in future videos. And I hope you like this video and please subscribe uh, to my videos if you haven't and, and, and hit the like button too. That always helps. And if you have a comment, by, by all means, leave your comments below and I try to answer every single one of them. And remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders, all in a sky near you. You really don't need the telescope. It doesn't hurt to have it though, but you could just look up in the sky. And unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone.